Hi, boys and girls. I'm your Peter Pan storyteller. When you hear this sound, turn the page. Silverhawks, the origin, part one. A radio signal crackled across the interstellar void. It was coming from a space station called Hawk Haven on an asteroid near the galaxy of Limbo. Emergency transmission, galaxy of Limbo calling to Earth. The caller was the tough, one-eyed boss of Hawk Haven. Emergency transmission, this is Commander Stargazer to Earth. The commander's call was half metal with telescopic sight. Commander Stargazer to Earth, do you read me? We copy Commander Stargazer. Begin emergency transmission. We have just had an intergalactic prison breakout on Penal Planet 10. Isn't that where you imprisoned Monstar? Monstar has escaped. Your report, please, Commander Stargazer, in full detail. Okay, here's what happened. At 1300 Intergalactic Standard Time on the 40th day of the year 2839, a galaxy of limbo experienced a moon star burst. This time, the moon star's rays shone directly into the penal planet. You remember what those rays do to Monstar, don't you? The commander described how the hideous prisoner had battered his cell walls and rattled the bars in fury. The boys up there did everything they could to black out the place. But somehow those blasted rays penetrated Monstar's cell. As guards closed the shutters, the prisoner snarled. Stop, you fool! Let the moon star shine into my cell, and you will be rewarded with wealth beyond wealth. Forget it, Monstar. We know exactly what will happen if you ever see the moon star again. As the shutter clanged down, a loudspeaker began a warning countdown. Moon starburst, minus 16. Monstar roared in frustration. Outside, the brilliant moon star was glowing ever more brightly. Its flaming rays glinted off the armored prison. No! Groaned Monstar. This may be my last chance. Moon starburst, minus nine. Minus seven. Moon starburst, minus five. Monstar's huge fist pounded the shutter and a single ray speared through the slats. Yes! Yes! Give me your power! Your energy! Moon Starburst minus two. Monstar fought desperately to rip open the slats. Moon Starburst minus one. Each fresh ray seemed to increase his strength. Moon Starburst and... Zero. As the weird orb flared into dazzling brilliance, the prisoner tore at the blackout barrier until the steel shutters hung in shreds. Now, at last, the master criminal stood exposed to the full blinding glare. Moon star of limbo. He chanted, Give me the might, the muscle. The menace of Monstar! His transformation was complete. The rays had changed the bestial giant into a super powerful fiend encased in armor. His right eye a fiery slash, his left eye a blaze of demonic energy. As he sliced through the prison walls, the guards rushed in, firing their weapons. But the laser beams glanced off Monstar harmlessly and ricocheted back at the guards. Nothing could stop him now. Stargazer! I'm free! Next moment, he was surging out and away from the penal planet. For a while, he soared exultantly through space. Then, his eyes caught a distant gleam of light. Gradually, it shaped itself into an enormous space grid with glowing tentacles. Skyrunner, old friend! It's me, your master! I missed you! 
shouted Monstar. The creature bore down on him, shooting out bolts of electricity. But Monstar rocketed easily out of harm's way and roared with laughter. You crawl wild! Forgot me! You need a little persuasion! Now it was Monstar's turn to attack. His eyes pulsed red, and the fiery burst shot out from the star-shaped eye. Skyrunner backed off in alarm and turned to flee, but the burst of light pursued it relentlessly. You cannot escape the light star! Sure enough, the fireball closed in and surrounded the huge space squid. As if by magic, it was transformed instantly into a fearsome jetcraft. Monstar leaped aboard and gunned it into action. Together, we will terrorize the galaxy of Limbo. Continue transmission, Commander Stargazer. At 13.40, intergalactic standard time, Monstar, universal public enemy number one, return to the penal planet and free the group of the most dangerous criminals in this or any other galaxy. You getting all of this, or am I just talking to myself? Transmit visual material, please. Okay, here we go. I'm going to show you the whole mod. Number one, Molecular. Master of disguise, he can assume any shape, any form. He is Monstar's undercover guy. The video screen showed how the weird creature could rearrange his bodily structure. The female, Melodia. Mistress of evil notes. <laughs> Her musical power has shattering consequences. Deadly silver laser beams flashed out whenever she pressed her synthesizer keys. Here is Mumbo Jumbo, the strong man of the mob. This bull-like robot, with fire-snorting nostrils and laser eyes, was the gang's most formidable brawler. Hardware, Monstar's weapons man. A high-tech gunsmith, he supplied the mob with awesome firepower. And Windhammer, the Storm Master, with that blaster tuning fork of his. The fork's vibrations could stir hurricane winds, jagged lightning bolts, and peals of thunder. Already, in fact, Hawkhaven itself was adrift in a violent galactic storm. And that's just for openers. Commander Stargazer to Earth, we could use some help up here. We could use some help up here. Back on Earth, plans were taking shape. A unique team would be formed and sent to the galaxy of Limbo to aid Commander Stargazer. At a top secret laboratory in the Arizona desert. Good morning, General. Morning, Professor. Data on our volunteers for the mission to Commander Stargazer. Well, let's take a look at it on the holograph projector. The professor slotted a computer disk into his control console. The general introduced each volunteer as three-dimensional figures appeared before their eyes. Now, boys and girls, turn the recording over. He's the leader, Jonathan Quick, former head of Federal Interplanetary Force 8. His hawk code name, Quicksilver. The professor clicked a switch, and two new images formed. Emily Hart and Will Hart, the twins, they're technicians, designers, and both strong as all get out. When one twin feels something, so does the other. Uh, their hot code names Steel Heart and Steel Will. The twins faded out as the professor switched to a new hologram. Here's a volunteer from the planet of the Mimes, a mathematical genius. He'll be known as the Copper Kid. The next image seemed to startle the professor. This can't be right. He looks like a cowboy. <laughs> that cowboy's a colonel, Professor, and the best pilot in the solar system. We'll call him Bluegrass. The professor nodded as the hologram show ended. I'm impressed, General. Hmm, it seems a shame we can't send them up to Commander Stargazer as they are. One day we'll be able to send an ordinary person 100 light years into space, General. But right now we can only send one who is partly metal and partly real. Well, have you completed their modifications? Uh, we're checking them now. A woman assistant entered. All the sensors are attached, Professor. We're ready. She joined the other two at the control console and turned several switches and dials. Command Silverhawk's check run. Drawings of an android figure appeared on the monitor screen. Shoulder jets. Operative. Arm jets. Affirmative. Heel jets. All in order. 
Talons? Yes. Wings? In perfect order. Left hands? Normal. Heads? Normal. Hearts? Lights flashed and an alarm sounded. Negative readout on the fourth and fifth hearts. What's happening, Professor? It's the twins. Ah, uh, it seems we have a problem with the real hearts, General. We'll have to fit mechanical ones. The General frowned. How will the twins operate without real hearts? <laughs> They'll be fine, General. Boatman laughed. Now their code names really fit. Steel Heart and Steel Will. Perfect. Let's hope our Silverhawks live up to their promise. Uh, we'll soon find out, General. Days later, the Silverhawks were ready for their final flight and combat tests. As their sleek craft zoomed down from the sky towards space headquarters, Bluegrass was at the controls. Silverhawks, stand by. He called. A space officer from another planet murmured, I hope your man can handle that machine. It's our latest fighter, the Mirage. Don't worry. Bluegrass can handle anything with wings. You'd better be right, General, because if you're not, our remote-controlled combat drone will find him out. After dipping its wings over headquarters, the Mirage soared steeply skyward. Bluegrass alerted his team in their launch pod. Silverhawks, sound off. One, two, sound off. Three. Four whistled. The Hawks pulled down their visors. Prepare to launch. Release. Quicksilver shot out of his pod. Release. Steelheart emerged next. Release. Steel Will followed his twin. Last came the Copper Kid. The Silverhawks plunged downward, Quicksilver in the lead. The voice of Bluegrass sounded from loudspeakers in the ship's hall. Silverhawks, wing it! One by one, the Hawks lowered and raised their arms, spreading their silver wings. Then they soared and touched hands, flying in line of breath. Pick them off! Bluegrass ordered. Quicksilver spiraled downward. So did Steelheart and Steel Will and the Copper Kid. Cluster! Came the order. The Silver Hawks zoomed toward each other and clasped hands in a circle formation. Below, the alien space officer jabbed a control button and a missile blasted off. The combat test was about to begin. Uh oh! Gasped Bluegrass. Scatter! The Hawks streaked apart as the remote controlled drone cut a fiery path between them. All four shot upward, their heel jets trailing plumes of vapor. Combat drone at three o'clock! The missile was homing in on them, but their rapid climbs evaded it. Now we'll see what your silver hawks are made of, said the space officer. At a flick of the controls, the drone maneuvered rapidly and rocketed upward in pursuit of the team. Its laser guns opened fire, but again, the silver hawks took evasive action. Dive! cried Bluegrass. The hawks did so, and the drone passed overhead. Now, it attacked their mother craft, roaring head on toward the Mirage. Bluegrass held course, then rolled at the last instant. The two crafts streaked past, missing each other by inches. All right, let's show them the hot seat in action. Bluegrass chuckled as he pulled a lever. The cockpit canopy slid back, and the pilot seat shot forward. It was a separate mini-jet fighter all by itself. Meanwhile, the drone was still attacking, but the super fighter seemed impervious to laser fire. Time to give the Mirage effect a look-see. Bluegrass flicked a switch. A beam of light flashed from the hot seat toward its mother ship. The Mirage shimmered brightly. Then faded into invisibility. I'm impressed, General. That's brand new stuff. First time it's been tried. As the space officer and others watched, the Silver Hawks went into action. One after another, they blasted the drone with their suit lasers. Bluegrass nosed the hot seat into a dive. Then he zoomed upward from below, pumping bolt after bolt of laser fire into the drone's belly. Smoke billowed from the missile as it plunged toward the headquarters building. The observers scattered in alarm, but they were in no danger. 
the copper kid signaled his mates, and again they riddled the falling drone with laser fire. Bluegrass gave a final burst that flew it into fragments. The observers looked up in relief as the tiny pieces rained down harmlessly. The professor grinned proudly. Well, gentlemen, there they are, the Silverhawks. The space officer smiled approvingly as they landed. Congratulations, General and Professor. You've created a fine team. Why, thank you, sir. Would you care to meet the Silverhawks? An honor. Lieutenant Quicksilver. Fine job, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. May I present our twin sergeants, Steelheart and her brother, Steel Will. Put it there, pal. She shook hands. Oh, uh, sir. The space officer winced, and Steel Will apologized. Don't mind her. Sir. She doesn't know her own strength. Pleased to know you, sir. Quicksilver added. I'd like you to meet the Copper Kid, sir, from the planet of the Mimes. <laughs> the kid whistled. Fine, uh, and you? And Colonel Bluegrass, our pilot. Howdy, uh, sir. Congratulations, young man. Some fine show. Oh, shucks. That weren't nothing, sir. You just wait till I get the hang of it. Your silver hawks have done you proud, gentlemen. Let's just hope they impress Monstar and his mob as much as they have you, sir. The general added. Professor, you've outdone yourself. When is blast off for limbo? Tomorrow morning, General. 0800. Very well, then. Good flying, silver hawks. <laughs>